Hello and welcome. You're watching Money Nine, and I'm Krishna Kumar. Before we go any further, make sure you're subscribed to us across all social media platforms. So like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Money Nine Life, or also across Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram on Activate Money Nine Live. And make sure you also log into Money Nine dot com for all the latest from the world of personal finance. And today. We have a very special guest joining us here on Money Nine, Mr. P. V. Subramanian, personal finance expert of Subramani. dot com, and he is joining us for a very special edition of Money Masterclass. This edition of Money Masterclass is all about uh, a beginner's guide to investing in international mutual funds. Uh, Uh, Mr. Subramanian, thank you as always uh, for being with us here on Money Nine Live. Uh, uh, tell us in in simple terms, you know, there's so much interest in investing uh, in international mutual funds of late. So many new funds have been launched uh, uh, as well. How do you see this? You know, because how what are the intrinsic advantages of people, you know, opting for or looking for international mutual funds to invest in? Uh, let's see how. At the outset, let me say it is not necessary at all for the common man to invest in international funds. But as usual, there is performance chasing, and last uh, couple of years the U.S. market has done well. So there is performance chasing. So when you talk of international markets, mostly Indians mean American markets and that in Fang, right? So it is those uh, Facebook and uh, uh, those kind of companies, Google and uh, Netflix, which people are chasing. uh facebook amazon netflix and uh, that those are the companies that are chasing and uh, well uh, why would they do it well india is about 3% of world market cap and if you invest in other parts of the world you get 97% so you get exposure to developed markets global top companies like say a boeing or a samsung or uh, any of those companies which is not available to you in india i mean facebook amazon none of those companies are available to you in india It is a uh, tobacco company. There are big range of companies out there. Uh, if you take com- countries like Taiwan and uh, South Korea, you get companies at very low PE and high dividend yield. So there's a huge variety out there. So it helps you, you know, with your portfolio diversification. And obviously, because of that, your risks get mitigated, and therefore. You can you can be happy to be across the world, and if you a small portion of your portfolio um, were to fall, say you are invested in Japan or you are invested in Korea, it won't hurt you too much. It is nice to have an international diversification. Right, uh, you are also talking about managing currency fluctuations as an intrinsic advantage of uh, investing in international mutual funds. Talk to us about the forex impact. Clearly, uh, you know you are investing in companies uh, you know uh, that are outside. Uh, outside india the uh, especially if it's the us it's all about the dollar uh, rupee uh, rate which only goes in one direction as we all know so what are the uh, you know forex uh, fluctuation impact that investors first time investors need to bear in mind before they go forward and invest in international mutual funds so kk you realize what you said you said my dollar always goes up against the rupee right so that is what we bet on but what happens if the dollar goes against the rupee none of us are ready for that right and things can happen you never know what will happen so you are saying we are assuming that the dollar will always appreciate and therefore there is an upside you have to be ready that the dollar can also depreciate and there could be a downside so if your portfolio is up by 10% the dollar falls by 10% your all your gains are completely negated Also, if you are really internationally diversified, you should not do too much of currency appreciation because you have put some money in China, some in Taiwan, Korea, Europe, and US, Japan, right across. So you are just creating a little bigger basket of currencies instead of saying, okay, the rupee dollar uh, appreciation. But yes, people do think that the dollar will appreciate against the rupee constantly, maybe a two three percent every year. so that is likely to be an extra gain that you make because of the currency the indian currency depreciating and the us currency appreciating all right uh, fair enough that is as far as the forex uh, impact is concerned let's now uh, get down to the brass tax or the question of tax when it comes to international mutual funds uh, uh, you know tell us at the end of the day international mutual funds too uh, from the taxation perspective in india they are also treated as domestic funds don't don't they so in that sense there is no extra tax burden if you if one were to invest in an international mutual fund 
Yeah, it's a little tricky. You can invest abroad either directly, which means you can use your LRS, that is your liberalized remittance scheme, and invest money in the US. Or you can invest in Indian mutual funds. Uh, if there are 42 fund houses, you can be sure there will be 42 schemes because that is the flavor of the month. So every fund house will come out with an NFO. Uh, and we will be able to talk about it in the forthcoming uh, show. So there are the two choice. There are funds here in India where they look at even Indian taxation because uh, I think BSP as a fund which is 65% Indian and 35% is uh, American or foreign. Mm. So you get such things also. So either you will get uh, debt taxation or equity taxation. At least you don't have to worry about American dividend tax or American escape duty, what happens to your money. Of course, escape duty is not applicable because they are not citizens of US. But yes, if you invest in Indian uh, mutual funds which have foreign schemes, then you are taxed as debt funds and not as equity funds. But there are funds which have 65% Indian equity and 35% in foreign equity. There you get taxed even as uh, equity mutual funds. So yes, both options are available. All right, fair enough. Uh, can you also tell us, now that we're getting very specific into, you know, which funds to invest in, uh, tell us, you know, what are some of the top funds uh, uh, that uh, people should be investing in at this point in time? If you can uh, come up with a few names that are, uh, you know, at the top of your head. No, I, uh, I really don't know top of the head, but I, DSP has a global asset allocation fund of funds. ICSC has a uh, asset allocation fund of funds. After you put in these two, you wait for some time, 42 NFOs are expected because this is the flavor of the month. Everybody will come out with an NFO and everybody will say we are different. So have a look at what is really so different and then you can make a choice. Right now, I can talk of the mind recall is the DSP and uh, ICNCI. So well, there are two things that you're saying. One is that you're extremely bearish. You seem to be extremely bearish on the US. Uh, economy per se, you are, uh, you know, in fact, saying that there is no chance that it's going to grow the way it did over the last four or five years, if I'm hearing it right. I'm not bearish, but I'm saying, remember, it's here at the top of a bull market. See, the problem is when I say the top of the bull market, I'm not saying it can or can't go higher. But it is not the market which you will regret after two, three years and say, oh, I wish I had investment. It is definitely not that kind of a market. So, like I said, the first disclaimer, it is not necessary to invest in international funds. All right. We will leave it at that. I'm afraid we've run out of time over here. Thank you, Mr. Tiri Subramaniam of uh, Subramoney.com, personal finance expert, for being with us here on uh, Money Masterclass here on uh, Money9. Thank you, all of you, for watching. This is Krishna Kumar signing off. Mm -hmm.